Good evening. I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting of Monday, August 5th, 2019. And please rise as we get a prayer from Reverend Hank Rosso of Midwest Bible Camp. Says on. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you for joining me as we bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this evening. We thank you as we're gathered here together the, with business at hand for wisdom that you give to all who ask. We thank you, Lord, for spirit of unity, which you instruct us to strive for. Lord, we thank you that with each one here, Lord, representing so many things we take for granted, things that we don't even think about, Lord, our, our firefighters and our paramedics and EMTs who, who are there at just a phone call to help us in a time of need. We thank you for our police officers who patrol the streets at night, who keep us safe and also there at our beck and call. We thank you for the courage and the servant's heart that they display time and time again in some pretty difficult situations. Lord, uh, we're also mindful of those other things that we take for granted. We have pretty great streets here in Watertown, and we know that those who complain, they just need to just travel to some other communities and realize it's a pretty good place to live. And so many other things, Lord. We thank you for our utilities and, and all the workers that keep this, uh, this business called the city uh, leadership running, Lord God. We take these things for granted, but tonight we pause and we give you thanks. Lord, we don't live in a perfect place, but it's really, really great, and we thank you for that. Lord, we also thank you that we share this one common thing, and that is we love our community. So we ask your hand a blessing on us here tonight. We're thankful that the scouts are here, Lord. We thank you for that program and how they shape uh, young men and, uh, and women now into uh, leaders for tomorrow. So, God, we thank you for all these things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that heartfelt message. I appreciate it very much. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Okay. Albertson? Here. Bueller? Here. Hoyer? Here. Pauline? Here. Lalam? He left. He was feeling. Okay. Well. Absent? Manti? Here. Radomski? Here. Roby? Here. Vilhauer? Here. Why? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start the meeting off with a moment of silence to honor the victims of the recent violence that we've experienced in our country and just hope and pray that we can get beyond that. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. I have a motion by Y. Second. Second by Roby. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item number two is public comment. This is the time set aside for anyone who would like to speak about something that's maybe not on the agenda to come forward. You're welcome to do so. Seeing none, we'll move on. Item number three is approval of the agenda. I move the approval of the agenda. Second. Have a motion by Vilhauer and a second by Manti. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item number four is appointment of HR director. <laughs> this is a very, very happy day for the staff because we've been without an HR director for a long time. So I'd like to introduce Jelaine Fifley. Would you please stand up so everyone can see you? She's very highly qualified and smart, and we're just really excited that she's coming to help us out. Yes, so, <laughs> welcome. Item number five is approval of airport car rental lease agreement with Rovar LLC. Mayor, you never got a motion to approve the appointment oh. of the HR director, so I'm <laughs> so excited. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, I have a motion by Manti and a second by Holine. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. It's official now, <laughs> Jelaine. <laughs> Day one, check. <laughs> All right. So, um, approval of airport car rental lease agreement with Rovar LLC. Make a motion that we approve the lease agreement. Okay, we have a motion by Manti. Second. Second, second by Rademski. And I will open the public hearing. And the first thing I'd like to do is ask the airport manager to um, describe for the public uh, exactly what this is and what we're doing. Sure. Uh, so this is a <clears throat> this is a lease agreement for. Uh, budget and Avis, uh, essentially uh, Rover LLC uh, will be budget and Avis in the terminal. Uh, this is the signed lease agreement uh, between the city of Watertown and Rover. Uh, we're giving them 16 square feet in the terminal and I believe 15 stalls for parking cars at the airport. Uh, this is a 7% of gross <coughs> revenue. so. Whatever they do for gross revenue, uh, we get 7% uh, to the city. Uh, the lease is good through 2029. Any other? Okay. And has this? It has been approved by the airport board, recommended by the airport board, yes. Okay. So this went through the airport board. It's been a rather long process. We issued RFPs, and we talked about it a lot. 16 square feet, not a lot of space. They don't um, need a whole lot. They're paying us 7% of their gross Correct. Um, for that privilege. Um, and I guess I'd like to open the floor to anyone who's here to speak about this issue. Please come forward and state your name into the microphone before speaking. Uh, good evening. I'm Charlotte McElhaney, uh, and I am representing uh, Lake City Rentals. I have been renting cars in Watertown for over 30 years. And this is Mr. Alan Beyer, and he's representing Premier Auto Rental, who has also been renting in Watertown for... It would be 18 years total for that company. Um, we will continue to be renting. You know, the airport rental is a very tiny portion of the local car rental business. And uh, we just wanted to let you know that, you know, that that is a tiny portion of our car business, and we uh, intend to keep our businesses going. And also, on, I have one comment on this. I said when they sent the bid sheets out, there's only two companies in this town. I learned about the bid after the bid was closed because it was only on the Internet. They said there was a little tiny caption in the paper. I mean, I also have a buddy that has an Avis that we could have set in here also, but nobody told us about the bid. I don't know if Charlotte knew it or not, but, I mean, that was not not a good deal. We should have been personalized or we should have been notified by mail. There's only two companies in this town. I mean, I kind of like take it as a conflict of interest here because it is because we had no, I had no idea there was even a big one on until one of the former city council people told me it was on. So it's, I mean, we were misinformed all the way through on this deal. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? <clears throat> I'm Shannon Cruz, uh, airport board president. I'd just like to make one note. Uh, at the airport board meeting, I think it was uh, the notes of April 2nd, I believe. I could be wrong. Please go back and check. It was discussed. It was approved. Public comment was open. Um, both of these members did speak at that, and we did approve at that to go out for bid, and we encouraged them to apply. So I, I feel somewhat... Uh, conflicted as to uh, what that means, but I'll just leave it with that. Thanks. Thank you. 
Anyone else? If there's no one else to speak in the public hearing, I will close the public hearing. Go ahead and do that. And um, Councilwoman Manti, you made the motion. Would you like to be first with questions or comments? I think most of them have been answered, <clears throat> especially once there was a clarification of how the process was take um, took place. All right, thank you. Councilman Radamski, any questions or comments? Other council members? Councilman Y? Uh, Matt, maybe you can answer this question. When the city puts out bids for things, what is our responsibility as a city? Do we notify construction companies, uh, things like that, of, of bids, or do you have to watch for it in the paper or uh, on, the, on the Internet? Well, I think... Um Typically, you have to keep an eye out for that sort of thing. We uh, Actually, this might be a, a better question uh, for Heath, but I mean, I know that uh, folks can, for bids in particular, folks that are uh, regular bidders can subscribe to our to our uh, listserv that they'll get notifications uh, for bids. Um, I know there are situations where we do uh, send out requests to certain organizations if, if we you know, are aware of them. Uh, our legal requirement... Uh, to do so uh, does not exist, but there are times that we do that. <clears throat> do you want to add to that, Heath? Yeah, I think Matt summarized it pretty well. The, the legal requirement is to advertise a certain number of times, a certain number of days ahead of the bid opening, and that is the legal requirement. There are certain projects where we do reach out and uh, try to summon bids from certain contractors to um, that we know may specialize in work or things like that when it comes to construction projects. but. The legal requirements or the advertising um, requirements and the deadline to do so. So we were with we we followed everything. We complied with the law. Well, I would just note in this case, um, this is not a bid. Um, this is a it was a request True. for proposals. Now the law actually doesn't require that in this case at all. Um, we chose to do so uh, because it's in the best interest of the city uh, essentially. But um, for leasing property. There is no request for proposals requirement. Right. So we didn't have to do this at all. We didn't even have to request proposals. We could just make an agreement. But we did accept proposals from anyone that was interested in providing proposals. All right. Councilman Vilhauer. I've, I've got a question on the uh, the seven percent of gross revenue. Who, who monitors that, or how are we going to know that we're getting our our appropriate share? Uh, they will have to provide us documentation per month. Okay, and, and then maybe it's a tax accountant in me, but I, I see that they're they're allowed to pass that seven percent on as a as a separate line item on their bill. Correct. Concessions. Does that seven percent add on become part of what we then collect seven percent on, or is that just a separate <laughs> item? In other words, you get a circular calculation there. So I'm guessing we don't get a cut of the extra seven percent. Do you under, understand my question? Great question. I, I, yeah, I get it. I, I don't think it's intended to be circular. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Other comments or questions from the City Council? See none, I'll ask for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item number six is resolution number 19-22 for the creation of Public Works Department. I'll move the adoption of the resolution. A motion by Vilhauer. A second. A second by Manti. And I will describe what this is. Uh, when I ran for mayor, uh, part of my platform was that I would uh, take the administrative duties of the mayor position very seriously and look critically at the organizational structure and look for ways to improve efficiency because efficiency means lower cost to the taxpayers. So I've been doing that for two years and um, it's my recommendation that we reduce the number of direct reports to the mayor, which are 13 or 14 uh, different department heads report to me and um, it's an inordinate number. We can improve efficiency by 
creating sub-departments, and this is a very common thing that's done in cities to have a public works department, which includes all of the functions that um, we had in our public works department prior, which include the street department, the airport, the wastewater and solid waste departments, the engineering department, the planning function, building services. So all of those um, departments are suggested to be combined into one department called the Public Works Department. And um, this is an organization structure that the city of Watertown utilized um, prior to 2009. In 2009, the mayor unilaterally disbanded the Public Works Department and made every, <laughs> of every one of those groups its own individual department um, directly reporting to the mayor instead of to the public works director. And then the public works director position was eliminated. Now I'm not suggesting at this point that we create a new position of public works director. I'm recommending that that be added onto the city engineer duties because normally a public works director is a licensed civil engineer with training experience and um, background in public works. And being a civil engineer myself, I, I understand the um, education involved in this type of a position. It's a position I aimed for um, as an engineer. And I was trained for in college. And I practiced throughout my career. And Heath has the same background that I have. In addition, he has a master's degree which I don't have, and he's actually been helping me quite a bit with, um, I bounce everything off of him. He's very knowledgeable. He has acted as a public works director um, for another community, and so he's very well suited to take these duties on as the public works director slash city engineer. So the way things would change, um, as, as the city engineer, he's currently over the urban planner, the engineering administrative assistant, the assistant city engineer, and the engineering techs. So that would remain so, uh, but added under his area would be the Sioux River Watershed Project, the Building Services Department, the Airport Department, the Street Department, and the Solid Waste slash Wastewater Department. And there is um, currently going on a wage study to look at all of the duties and um, fair, figure out what fair pay is for these various different um, groups. And I, I kind of wanted to get this done before that wage study is done so that the positions can be accurately assessed during this time when we're undergoing a wage study. The wage study isn't done, but we've discussed this with our consultant who's an expert in um, organizational management. And uh, we bounced the question off. There's, within the packet, there was a memo written by our consultant, McGrath. And Dr. McGrath and um, her assistant, Melena Halverson Mays, wrote this uh, memo in support of what I'm suggesting. Uh, it has been um, mentioned that maybe we should wait for two years until we have a city manager and see what the new city manager thinks because they might not want this. And um, what I'm saying is these are two different things. We have duplication of services and we have ample opportunity for efficiency by combining these various different groups into um, one department. And then we don't need to have, for instance, an administrative assistant in every single subcategory. We can provide those services um, instead of part-time here and there with the existing staff that we have. And people do similar jobs and we can call upon them. There is a lot of efficiency to be gained, which is um, the primary reason for doing this. McGrath was very supportive. Their memo recommends that and um, that this is not the same thing as a city manager. It's a even if you have a city manager, you still probably want a public works director, and many communities do. Um, the city of Aberdeen 
has a city manager and a public works director slash city engineer. So um, I think this will be very helpful for our efficiency um, and I'm looking forward to doing this. Now, unlike Mayor Williams who in 2009 made this change without consulting with anyone, I would like the support of the council in making this change to our organizational structure. I don't want to do anything that uh, the council doesn't think is in the best interest of the community. And so if you disagree with me that this is in the best interest of the community, um, this is the opportunity to bring it up. There, at this time, is no change in salary uh, because we already have a person that's on the staff that will be taking on the extra duties. It is extra work for that person, but as long as I'm here, and I'm here for at least two more years, um, I am a backup to that, and I'm um, certainly able to continue to assist and um, provide support wherever needed, and particularly because public works is my area of expertise. I'm, I'm here for that. But when um, the change happens, two years from now, I may not be reelected. Your next mayor may not have the experience to be the public works director. I've always felt that was inappropriate for the former mayor to declare himself the public works director, and I vowed to remove those duties from the job description, even though I like doing those duties. Um, I, it's not about me. It's about what's best for our community, and, and I feel very, very strongly that this is an appropriate change to make in our organizational structure. So um, I would open it up for questions, and I don't remember who made the motion. Was it, okay, Councilman Villhauer, you can start. Um, comment, a couple of questions, and maybe another comment at the end. Uh, first of all, I, I do want to thank the mayor for bringing this before us, because uh, I was thinking this could have been a decision that was made. Uh, it's an operating decision that could have been made unilaterally without getting our input. So I do appreciate the, the opportunity to have some comment on this. I guess my first question is, I want to direct it to, to you, Heath, uh, as far as what this means to your workload. I mean, you've got a department that's already uh, overworked, and I guess I'm just, well, we need to know what this means to your <laughs> workload. We don't want to appoint this to you and all of a sudden six months from now you turn in your letter of resignation because you can't handle the work. So I guess uh, I want to hear some comments. Uh, I think we all want to hear some comments uh, for what this means to you, Heath. Absolutely. Thank you, Councilman Vilhauer. Um, I guess, first of all, I'd just like to say, uh, you know, I'm hum humbly grateful for this uh, prospective opportunity here this evening. Uh, this is directly in line with, with my training and background and my education and certifications. And uh, for the mayor to consider me for this as a direct appointment in combination with my current duties, I just wanted to express my, my humble gratitude for that. Um, now to your question, as far as the uh, workload is concerned, you know, I, I would be lying if I were to tell you I would not be taking on any additional workload here. That's obvious to everybody. Uh, this change would put more demand on my day. There's no doubt in that. Um, I've kind of got a twofold answer to that to where uh, my first response is I feel a lot of the way we operate right now as the mayor has indicated with the way she has been able to bounce things off me uh, from a public works standpoint a lot of the duties that I do perform today are directly in line with what a public works director uh, would already be doing and I like to think of this as a, a formalization of that uh, the reality of what we're faced with today and how we operate um, that being said, you know, we've got outstanding division leaders, department heads right now that would become division leaders, and they, they know their departments inside and out, and they would be a strong asset to plug this in uh, with myself as a director, I feel, with the working rapport that I've been able to build with all these uh, uh, individuals in their departments throughout the year that I've been here. I think that we'd be able to pick up on that and continue to move forward in a very productive and positive manner. Which brings me to my second point of this creates a formal ability for me to create efficiencies as a department. Right now I, I see some glaringly obvious things that we could tweak and, and, and fix and improve. 
And if I were to have uh, directorship rules such as this to plug some of those measures in, some of which the mayor alluded to, where we have uh, multiple assistants in, in one floor, for example, that we could maybe be assigning different duties to one of those assistants and modifying their job descriptions. Uh, and I don't want to say too much here to scare staff by any means, but th there is a, there's a lot of potential here and room for improvement. And as we plug in those efficiencies, I think that that creates and fosters a work environment where my duties will be completely sustainable as a public works director slash city engineer. Thank you. Th thank you, Heath. Uh, maybe you've answered my next question already with your previous answer. I mean, are the departments that would be impacted by this, are they on board with, with this uh, action? Um, can, any comments along those lines, Heath or Mayor? Um, Pete, would you bring up the organizational chart for the Public Works Department? And I have to say, I know that um, several of the department heads are very concerned that this is a demotion to them. And I would have to say that's just not the case. The um, Public Works Director is not going to be into the daily business of any of the um, division heads. Um, I, I can tell you I worked for the city of Watertown as an engineer under a public works director and then under a mayor, under two different mayors that were the public works director and they deferred everything to the city engineer. Now I'm trying not to do that. I um, understand what it takes to be a public works director and um, so I'm, I'm trying to be more mindful of that, but it's um, the, these are all positions, with the exception of the Sioux River watershed project, that were uh, under the public works director before that position was eliminated, and they're naturally in other communities. These are typical of a public works department, and if if you're looking at this as well, I'm no longer the top of the mountain. I'm not the number one person in charge. Therefore. <coughs> this is a demotion and I don't like it. Um, I, I get that, I do understand it. It's, it's not meant as a demotion in any way, shape or form. Um, and and th what you really need to think about is what is the best thing for the community, not what is the best thing for the individual serving in a position because uh, frankly, I mean, the people are going to change throughout time and we shouldn't be organizing our community around individuals. They, they should be around the appropriate, whatever the best organizational theory is, that's what we should practice. So yeah, I, the long answer to, is everyone on board? <coughs> that people don't like it. There's a couple that don't, and there are, uh, most of them have said, yeah, they get it. They've uh, worked under a public works director in the past, and. Um, I have to say, the ones who are against it, I don't think ever worked under a public works director, and so they, they don't understand. The ones that did work under a public works director here, they get it. They're, you know, their jobs didn't change when the mayor declared himself the public works director. Um, it, it, you know, they're, they're still doing everything that they're doing right now. There's just a little bit of oversight and uh, looking at it from a higher level to look for efficiencies between the different departments. Yep. Um, thank you, Mayor. I, I had gotten prior to this meeting your thoughts on this, uh, Mayor uh, Heath. I had reached out to you. Uh, we've seen uh, M McGrath's uh, recommendations or thoughts. I also took the liberty because I had gotten to know him uh, fairly well through the entire. Uh, city manager, campaign, uh, et cetera. I reached out to uh, uh, Jeff Weldon, retired city manager of Brookings, who had been there a long time, uh, I think, think well respected in his position. I did reach out to him and uh, ask a question well, from, from his perspective, realizing that each community is different, so we're not necessarily comparing apples to apples. But I did reach out to, to Mr. Weldon, and I asked, and he did send a, a reply back almost immediately via email. And I asked him if I had permission to share his email with the council tonight, and he gave me his blessing. I'll just read uh, part of it, the last paragraph. 
He, first of all, he says, Brookings did not have a public works director, although every other city where I have worked, we had one. His closing paragraph is, uh, he only describes a little bit how Brookings organized. His closing paragraph then said, a public works director can make sense. It all depends on the type of services envisioned to be under that depart department and how it fits with the rest of the department heads and the whole array of services in this area that Watertown provides. You may wish to wait and see what the new city manager believes would be the best organiz organizational chart for all department heads so it all fits together to assign duties to various departments. Uh, and that's the end of his, his uh, email to me. I, I, I'm not raising that as necessarily uh, a negative to the idea, but I do want to point out from a different perspective uh, what an, an individual had to say that, that has been down this road uh, as a city manager. So I'll just share that with the, uh, uh, my colleagues here. Thank you. Councilman Albertson. To the last meeting that we had, we were talking about how we needed another engineer, you know, to help out. <clears throat> and I'm looking at this, and where I like the idea of the public works director, I'm really concerned about you, Heath, and, and taking on, this is going to be a lot of responsibility that you don't currently have in your title. And not to say that you can't handle it, but I, I'm really concerned about it because you were pleading your case last last meeting very well, I thought, to the point where we were trying to figure out how to get somebody else to help you. And now we're tacking on a potential of creating a lot of new things. I mean, it's not in place. It may be in your mind it's in place as to how this is going to handle. But I'm I'm really concerned about adding that to your table right now. Mayor. I want to let Heath respond. Yes, thank you for that, Councilman Albertson. Um, and those thoughts or concerns are very much appreciated and don't think I haven't thought about them with, with my wife and my family as well because uh, of the demands of a position like this. I, I would state that um, the way this is structured is, is not unlike what I've experienced in the past. And the workload in Watertown, um, Having been able to gauge what I'm doing as a city engineer now for the past year and having to build the department um, from a, a fairly new staff for the most for, for a good portion of it. Some of my key employees are fairly new, so training them and molding them and building that uh, level of accountability and uh, empowering them to do their jobs efficiently, um, I think is making strides in the right direction in the engineering office. And now that we have uh, filled one vacancy, that's another step in the right direction. Um, now, again, I'm not going to say we don't need any more help in engineering now, just so that this can happen. I would be, uh, uh, you know, telling lies if I were to go down that path. So I want to be as open and candid and straightforward with everybody as possible here. And I, I do feel that the way we're structured and the way we're operating right now, that this is a manageable form of structure that I could take on. I, I know th what the mayor's level of expertise is and uh, uh, being able to lean on her at times as needed uh, is, is an asset that um, you, know, you can't find anywhere at any given time on a restructuring like this. I think when you look at the restructuring, uh, to me it's, it's taking advantage of what we have in front of us to plug it in, to seamlessly make this thing work and hit the ground running with it. And I really think that with my background and experience, I can help make that happen if that's the council's decision. Um, I, I don't doubt that we would make this work. Would it be challenging? Absolutely. Would it be uh, the right move for the community? I absolutely believe that too, though. Thank you. Councilwoman Manti? Even though I can't read all of it because I'm so old. But anyway, <clears throat> as I look at this in terms of direct reports and then, of course, the different department heads keeping their um, the structure of their departments um, it, it would seem to me that that is uh, it makes sense to me actually is what I'm trying to say is that you know they still maintain the control over their departments they report to Heath as the public works director but they're all more in their own areas and as he said I know some of the people who hold those positions they're very competent at what they do and I think that that it would be more a matter of coordinating the services I like the idea of creating efficiencies um, I've seen things like this in the past in business uh, 
dealings that we've had, and it always does, if it's the right people are in place, you can create a much more efficient uh, machine, as it were, for your public works. And in regards to this, the, op the idea of pre-city manager versus post-city manager, in my opinion, I think that I would like to, as a city manager, come into a structure that has already been um, created, working well, and moving along, and then I think that would be easier for me as a city manager to say, okay, here's where we're going to plug in this and this and this. And again, I keep looking at how many direct reports does everybody have, and you know, you're going to continue to create efficiencies with those, and even with the city manager is going to look at that and say, okay, how many direct reports do I have? And you know, he's going to have you, you're going to have the other ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm, so I, I guess I would see this as an advantage to establish now. That, that's just my opinion um, prior to a uh, city manager or not. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, please, Mayor. Councilman Roby? Thank, Councilman thank Bueller? Um, the, I have a question on compensation. How does this affect their location as far as the compensation goes down the road in the, in the steps? I mean, it, if, you, if you go from a department head and now we're reporting to someone, I, I, that's the question I just have. I don't know what that answer is. Um, well, and that's and, part of the reason I wanted to do it at this time is because we have a professional firm evaluating our organizational structure right now and they're telling us with these duties you know what what should the fair compensation be okay well I, what I'm looking at is the perception maybe of, and, I, and I think these are all capable people all the folks that are doing this I honestly I don't think it's gonna be that big of a job for you because we got such talent and I would hope we can keep those people because they're very capable I think but I my, my concern is if you're a department head and now you're not reporting to the to the mayor at this point, does that change how they Kristen, are compensated I, in the future? I do want because of the, the as the mayor stated, um, the current structure or the previous structure was that these were not um, they did report to a public works director. The positions that are now going to switch back, if that's what the council determines, um, they are actually a grade eight position and the department heads are grade nine. So they're currently at a, a different level than the, than the department heads currently right now, so. So there's probably not a big change coming as. Yeah, Madam Mayor, uh, if I could follow up on that too, just in my experience with salary studies and analysis of pay, I, you know, the, the consultant, if, if this change were to be made, would assess, uh, for instance, the street superintendent just the same as they would, in my opinion, um, it, in comparison to regional street superintendent wages and the duties performed. Uh, it's not always just the direct reporting to as, as, as though your department had or not. That, that is a factor and can be a factor, but I think all the other items that weigh into that will sometimes weigh a lot more heavily as far as the job description, the duties performed, uh, the education and experience requirements and our job descriptions and things of that nature that would also impact that salary study. Right, thank you. I'm just going to read the last sentence of the McGrath memo. It says, therefore, regardless of the city of Watertown's form of government, it is recommended the city create a public works director to lead and manage the airport, engineering, building services, streets, Upper Big Sioux River watershed project, and wastewater and solid waste. Councilman Roby. Uh, two years ago when I ran for my second term, this is one of the comments I led with as I really thought we needed to get a public works director back in the city of Watertown. And the reason why I did it, after being on the council for four years, uh, I just realized that the way we're structured and all those people reporting the mayor, that's a big job. You know, you look at what Mayor Thorson did in terms of public appearances. You look what Mayor Karen does in terms of public appearances. There's, that's a very demanding job, and I think what this restructuring will do is allow a little more professional management and a little more attention, quite frankly, when you split the workload up a little bit. But it's going to allow for those efficiencies, but it also gives the mayor some more time to go be the mayor, quite frankly. It's just, there's just, it's, it's a hard job the way it's structured now. 
Uh, going forward, again, I'm very excited about the fact that we're moving to a city manager form of government. Very excited about that. I think that's great for the town. And I actually see the public works director position continuing because, again, I didn't, there's going to be some changes involved. But that chart you showed was a very busy chart. That's not near as busy as the chart was if the mayor has everybody underneath that person. So I am very much in favor of this. Thank you. Councilman Rademski. When do we anticipate this wage study taking place and being done if this is approved? It's underway right now, and the, we'll be getting our preliminary results back in end of September. Thank so we're, we're planning in our budget right now. We're anticipating the increased wages because we feel we're pretty low. We know we are compared to other cities, similar jobs, and um, so we're, we're planning for that. Councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry, Mike, I beat you to it. Um, Mayor, could you walk me back in time to 2009 and before? Did we have a public works director? Yes, we did. At that time? What yes. was he or she making as far as salary? The public works director was the highest paid public employee. Okay. And uh, when Mayor Williams took office, the position was vacant. Interviews were going on, and there were candidates waiting to hear. And the mayor said, you know, that was a rough time, as you might recall. We were having a recession. He said, I'm going to save a bundle of money. I will be the public works director. That's And it was, you know, in good faith. He didn't have a background in engineering or <laughs> public works. He didn't really know what he was taking on. But he did save the city that salary. So, so a couple of follow-up questions. When you say the salary, do you happen to remember in the ballpark of what that salary was? I think um, I, I do know it was the highest paid okay. person. So it was, um, it was around 90000 And let's say prior to 2009, how many engineers did we have working at that time on staff? The public works director was an engineer, and then there were... Th he, that was a licensed civil engineer, and there were three other licensed civil. So we had four licensed civil engineers and one engineer without a license, so five engineers. And currently we have how many engineers? Well, if you count the mayor, I'm a licensed civil engineer, and Heath is a licensed civil engineer, and we have two non-licensed engineers, so four. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I don't want to hog the microphone, but if I could ask a question for Heath. Sure. Okay. Um, this one is, and I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to ask this as the liaison to the airport board, um, airport specific. I'm concerned a little bit because sometimes dealing with the federal government, especially, it's a hurry up and wait game. But when it's hurry up, they mean hurry up because they sometimes give you very, very short notice that a grant is available and then they want you to get it all done and back to them in a very short period of time. I think Mr. Syree might be here at this time. He might be able to back me up or Councilman Bueller as well. I think in one time they were given basically a day to get a uh, request for proposal, get it all written up and back to the federal government. I guess my concern would be adding a layer of government that perhaps the airport board would have to go through. Perhaps you could assuage my fears if you could say, would the public works director be the final say in that s instance, or, or would the airport board have to go to public works director, then city manager, then the mayor? Well, right now, the, the only difference would be that there's someone that went to school to learn how to do those kinds of, you know, he's a licensed professional engineer trained in doing those types of things quickly, as opposed to the airport manager would have to do it more or less on his own, um, he doesn't have that that kind of training is not required to be the airport manager It's a highly technical uh, Thing that he deals with on a daily basis with millions of dollars of engineering projects that currently don't even Go through the engineering department, which is uh, one of the main reasons that it would be good to have that under someone who is trained in transportation um, basics and also has um, higher level training in writing and um, project management. So those are requirements of a public works director. 
those are not requirements of an airport manager and it's kind of not fair to saddle the airport manager with those duties and if it's a fast turnaround like that we have often skipped the airport board and gone straight to um, you know with just staff and I think that that would be an, a huge uh, advantage to have a trained person in those matters to facilitate. <coughs> I hope that answered your question. Michael, did you have a question? <coughs> yeah, just had a question and a comment. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering, and I think this actually ties a little bit in with uh, Councilman Holine's question, but by allowing this public works position, is this going to grant them more autonomy just to act quicker and kind of in their own fashion? I mean, yes, they are still accountable and everything, but will this allow, I guess, more purpose of action because they will have that direct interface with the individual, but I'm just kind of wondering, is this going to grant them a little bit more autonomy? I will just say this. It's instead of reporting to the mayor, who currently happens to be a licensed professional civil engineer. He'll be reporting to the public works director who's a licensed professional civil engineer. In the past, airport matters uh, were done by the mayor, who was the public works director, but not a professional engineer. And the federal marshal came to town uh, to explain the violations that were made. And I, you know, I, I think that um, it doesn't change the expediency of the person reporting to me or to the city engineer. Um, we're both engineers. But I would say if our mayor is not a licensed civil engineer or if the city manager is not a licensed civil engineer, there's a loss of efficiency in the way we're organized currently than having this person report to someone who's trained in those matters, such as a civil engineer. So I would say it's an, it's an improvement, and that's a strong argument for going with this organizational um, way. Understood. Um, I guess the only other comment I would say, as somebody who's currently involved in a very structured business, um, delegating those kinds of responsibilities tends to play out really well. I honestly am pretty supportive of doing this. Yes, it will add more to Heath's plate, but he's seen gung-ho to go for it and ready to take it on. But I think it'll just help those guys have a little more conversation, a little more focus, because it's really difficult when you're in a position where you are split 10 different ways, as opposed to taking five of those off and letting somebody work specialized and directly with those areas so that they can maybe be a little more cohesive and address the issues maybe a little more in depth and no fault of anyone's, um, but just having a little more time to focus in on it. So I, I would just say I'm in support of it. Thank you, Michael. Anyone else? No more, have we beat it to death? Okay, um, I will look for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. Roll call vote, please. Okay. Albertson? Aye. Beeler? Aye. Hoyer? Aye. Holine? No. Manti? Aye. Radomski? Aye. Roby? Aye. Uh, Vilhauer? Aye. <clears throat> and why? Aye. Okay. Eight to one, motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven is approval of resolution number 19-32, expressing intent to enter into a 25-year lease agreement renewable for 10 additional years with Shannon and Cheryl Cruz for property located at the Watertown Regional Airport. <coughs> I have a motion by Roby, a second by Manti. All right. Todd Syrie, airport managers here. Can you please explain this to us? Yes, uh, this is great news. <clears throat> Actually, this one and the next item uh, are notice of intent to enter into a uh, ground lease for a private hangar. Uh, expansion at the airport's always good. Okay. It's a 25 year term. Can you uh, show the where this is? 
the hangar location. Yep. There you go. Uh, so this is Shannon. So it would be right here. Okay. Can you orient? Uh, we have. To uh, so this. Uh, I zoom out here. So Lake Area Tech, uh, the aviation program is right here. Uh, so this is the road leading into the uh, Lake Area Tech, <clears throat> and this is to the east of that road. Uh, and there's two hangars existing right here already. Uh, and this will fill up this last taxiway uh, coming in through here. Is this an existing hangar or it is not. bare this is ground? This a bare ground. This will be a brand new hangar put up. Okay, and so the ground will be leased, and the private um, party will be owning the hangar itself. Correct. We'll be constructing it, and um, we'll be able to sell it later, and then we'd enter it if that's how that works. Correct. Yep. Okay. Any questions, Council, or comments? Councilman Vilhar? Just a clarification. This, th the actual lease agreement will come before us at, what, a future meeting or next meeting, whatever? Correct. It's just a resolution of intent or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we have to wait, what, 10 days? Post it for 10 days, I believe, Matt? Or Matt will maybe take over. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it has to be posted. So this is the resolution stating that we're going to be uh, hearing the public hearing at the next council meeting, and at that time they'll take action on the lease. We do post that notice in the newspaper no less than 10 days in advance. <clears throat> So there will be a lease coming up by uh, the next council meeting. All right. Any other questions or comments? See none, I'll look for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item 8 is approval of resolution number 19-33, expressing intent to enter into a 25-year lease agreement, renewable for 10 years, with GMR Aviation LLC for property located at the Watertown Regional Airport. So moved. I have a motion by Albertson and a second by Holine. Um, Todd? So this is a 60 by 75 hangar uh, that will be constructed at the airport. Uh, same type thing. Uh, it's to be a ground lease. It'll be up to them to put the building up. And it is just to the east of the other new one. Here's the one we just talked about. Uh, this would be just to the east. There is a taxiway here and a taxiway here. So uh, essentially, when I came in here uh, in 2010, we had these two hangars right here. Uh, since then, we have added this taxiway. Uh, we have had two hangars built here and then a third hangar built. Uh, so we have literally, we have two spots left is what I'm getting at uh, after these two go up. So really expanding in the private general uh, general aviation private sector of the airport. That's great. Where are the remaining lots? Uh, beside the hangar over here, sorry. So east. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Comments? Things are hopping out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right. I'll look for action. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item number nine is the first reading of ordinance number 19-09, a zoning text amendment to Title 21 of the revised ordinances of the City of Watertown, creating Chapter 21.56 DT Downtown Overlay District. And this is just a first reading, so I don't need any motion or anything. And Heath, will you tell us about it? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, this action, or not, excuse me, not action item, but this first reading tonight uh, is related to a, a zoning amendment uh, to our zoning ordinances that stems back to earlier this year, back in March of 2019. Discussions uh, began at the Planning Commission level to look at implementing a downtown aesthetics overlay district. And so what we've done, uh, our urban planner, Brandy Hanton, is here this evening. She's done a little bit of research, quite a bit of research on this, I should say. Um, looked at model ordinances from other communities and uh, has come up with a, a draft version that carried through to the Planning Commission, which was recommended uh, to the City Council for approval. And uh, Brandy, if you'd want to elaborate a little bit more in detail. Um, I guess generally speaking, just to, to kind of set the table here, is that this uh, 
has a lot of look and feel like the Gateway Overlay District that was accomplished maybe a year and a half, two years ago, sometime before my coming on here with the city. Uh, but Brandy, if you could take it from here. Yes, thank you, Heath. So, and he summed this up pretty well. We've been working with the Plan Commission on trying to get something on the books just to up uphold the integrity of our downtown and just so we had a higher um, aesthetic standard. Uh, we went, I mean, I looked at model ordinances and different ordinances from various communities that the Plan Commission had suggested. And um, we kind of, I mean, we did, we really looked at a lot of things with this and we feel this is a good start. Um, one thing, too, is that this doesn't do anything to existing businesses as far as um, improvements to their property. Um, but what, what it will do is if somebody is coming in and doing a substantial improvement or new construction, that they would uphold the requirements in this um, overlay district. Thank you. Councilman Roby? Uh, looking at the outline, the question I have is, if you have certain standards on one side of the street, shouldn't they be the same on the other? For, for example, uh, storefronts. Should they be you know, the same on one side of the street as the other side of the street? When you put your line down a street, the middle of the street like that, the guy on the right doesn't have to, but the guy, the guy on the left does have to. So how, how do you adjust? What's your thought on that? The boundary that we went with was from the Historic Preservation District. Now we also have the Urban Renewal District, but we didn't want to um, take in too many properties, I guess, and put them in here. We just did the basically the heart of our downtown. But I see your point there with drawing those boundaries, and I just wanted to keep it consistent with something that we already have in the books. Um, but I do see that concern. So this is the historic, the, the historic district. Every building in this district is a historic building because it, we just covered them all. Is that what I understand? You know, I I'm not. I don't know if they're all in the registry or if they have to follow those certain standards. Um, My understanding was we didn't register buildings individually. We did a district and every building in it is in that historic district. And so um, the existing buildings have some of the characteristics that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, some of the newer buildings that have gone up have not right. met this standard. and. Uh, anything new would be held to it. Right. Councilwoman Manti? Uh, this is something that I've been really looking for for about 10 years now. And because of the fact that I don't know if people realize that that's now zoned commercial, which is essentially the same as Highway 212, is that, would be that an accurate statement or not quite? I mean, I know that there hasn't been any restrictions on modern materials or signage or any of those kind of things. And I know that, um, downtown would benefit more from less flash and more of that historic look. And so I was very excited to see this come through on the uh, agenda. Um, and I think this is also going to be helpful for people coming in, for people who own buildings who want to remodel. You know, you're not saying you must use this color and you must have this brick and you must have this window. Basically what you're saying is let's keep our historic district looking good. You know, and I and I like that because you're not, and you're not binding anybody to those. You know, can only use colors from 1868 because that's when your building was built and things like that. So I think that a lot of work has been done. I agree with Don that you might want to take a look at some of those split streets, but otherwise, I'm I'm very excited that this is coming forward for us. Is part of the ordinance adopting the boundary? Yes. Okay, Councilman Vilhauer. Uh, <laughs> Just a couple comments. Uh, I know a lot of work went into this on the part of uh, Brandy, you and your staff, and the Planning Commission. So I want to thank you for that because it's been a long time coming. Excited to see this. Uh, as I understand it, because I, I watched the Planning Commission meeting uh, when this uh, was approved, and Jesse Craig was there uh, in a different issue about the uh, Harbor Bar development downtown, and he was kind of put on the spot as far as what his off the cuff comments were about this because he's got a lot of experience with downtown uh, development, and he was very much in favor of uh, of this of these proposed changes as well. So I, that that meant something to me to hear it from someone who's uh, been, been there and and done that, and he was supportive of these changes as well. Right. Yeah, definitely. All right. Other questions or comments? 
I got a just a quick comment. Okay, Michael. Um, <laughs> sorry. I would just say, and, and this is kind of echoing it a little bit too, but we might, because it's grandfathering these buildings in that have already been put up, we might consider looking at extending it down to 2nd Street Southwest. I mean, that's kind of where you get the end of that feel because even those buildings are a bit older. And then after you get past that, I, I just say that because that's like where my street is. So I walk this a lot, but that's kind of where you stop having that feel. Um, so we might just look at extending it west like a block along that it is it, it still feels like it's a part of camp but just something to consider yep and i i appreciate that i i know a great deal of thought went into the boundary and uh, as brandy said wanting to not have all these different boundaries downtown you got this one for this thing and that one for that thing and this third one for another so instead of creating a third boundary map we adopted the historic but that can always be modified later just um, with a simple ordinance change if if it's felt that it should be expanded we're starting small here but can definitely take that into consideration right go ahead chris hi mayor uh chris shilkin watertown development company um just wanted to address the boundary and um just put on record that see if we can have that go all the way to the west side of camp as that's the access as you come off the lake to downtown just like to maybe see that as there's some vacant lots down there that um, could be developed and just want to put that record on comment thank you thank you so the the comments that we've received are change the boundaries a little bit so <laughs> that's that's not a difficult change to make however changing it from like would we have to redo a first reading if they change the boundary Matt That's a good question. Uh, there is minor changes that are allowed between the first and second reading. Um, or something to, we could do in the future too. Right. And just, I mean, if this is adopted, we can immediately start assessing if we want to change that. It's it's not a done deal forever. I mean, we can or write our it, own rules. Is it something too that we could take back to plan commission and re-explore and? And I don't know, at this level then, do we table it or, you know, like if that, if that were the yeah. consensus? I mean, expanding the boundary seems, I mean, as I, as I think about it, it seems kind of significant. And so I would, it'd be my opinion that we would have to have another first reading to do so. So if that's something that we're interested in, uh, the, the group could pass this ordinance, and then we could uh, discuss it again at the plan commission and bring up a, an amendment to expand that boundary. Were the individual property owners affected by this change notified? Um, I we didn't specifically notify them. We I I did outline who or which properties they were, and then who the property owners are as well. If they were following this item, um, but I would imagine that we'd have to we do a public hearing again and renotice it beans that this boundary would change now we could also keep it consistent with the urban renewal district and that does broaden this area um, but no I did not notify the property owners to answer that question that that's a, a good um, thing to look at though because if the urban renewal boundary encompasses both of the suggested changes that would be easy and we yeah. still wouldn't be adopting um, a, a third map right and the nice thing is, is that it doesn't affect them today. It just is if there's new construction or if they're going to substantially improve their property. Right. So it doesn't have a lot of impact to them, to their properties or their existing structures today. What do you so. think is the uh, most impactful change in what you're suggesting here? <laughs> you know, I, I would say Building material, if they're not consistent with the historic nature right now, um, we did add that transparency clause, which um, enhances walkability. And mm -hmm. so that that's a, a good thing, and especially for what we're trying to do with our downtown, to have it more livable and workable. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it actually, it the setbacks, you know, right now it's zero, zero feet. You can build right up to the property line, up to the right of way. You can, with this, you can have a patio area if you want. Um, it allows for that. I mean, 
we have the maximum setbacks just so we're not losing that um, the sense of enclosure if people are pushing their buildings way back because we still want that but there really isn't anything negatively impacting the downtown in this this is just to uphold the integrity going forward okay thank you other comments or questions mayor I do. yes um, thank you mayor. I, I do think this would probably be a good thing for the Planning Commission to review I really do I think that's in my opinion the direction if we are going to make changes to that I, I agree and to because we had a lot of discussions on this and you know it might just be something to go back and say you know what really is the impact of looking at doing the urban renewal district boundary instead of the historic preservation so I think that would be appropriate too all right madam mayor yes. one last comment regarding the urban district boundary uh, to go back to councilman Roby's concern we still may have to jog some lines to avoid the uh, the streets being the dividing point um, to alleviate that concern so we still may end up with a third district of its own here but I don't see that as a insurmountable uh, task that uh, I, I agree with this point if you're going to have aesthetics and you're looking at it from a streetscape perspective you'd think you'd want those aesthetics on both sides of that street uh, and not be the dividing point to where one side applies and the other side doesn't but that's something we'll look at too with that urban district boundary and see exactly how that falls in relation to the street alignments and okay I do apologize too I do have a map on the server but I'm not logged in so I can't get to it otherwise I'd show you where that urban renewal boundary is but it does <laughs> encompass the areas that we're talking about for sure and then more all right thank you mm. Thank you all. Oh, Councilman Albertson. I think it sends the right message to take it back to the Planning Commission because when we were on the Urban Renewal Board, we talked a lot about the boundaries, and that did seem to take in even more than what we wanted sometimes But because there were some areas that people didn't like to be on there, but I think that's a good idea. All right. We'll take it back. That was the only comment I had as well. Take a look at that very outer edges. Right, yeah, because it does go on the north side of first. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll take a look at it. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. Item number 10 is approval of lease termination agreement and mutual release with PCR Aviation LLC. Okay. Mayor. Got a motion from Bill Hauer and a second from Albertson. So who's. <laughs> Somebody, oh, was it Matt? Was it Reed? I think Reed is saying make a Reed oh, oh. motion for approval. Oh, okay. Sorry. Who was the first squeaker? <laughs> Councilman? Uh, I think you think it was Councilman yeah. Holine? Okay, I got a motion from <laughs> Councilman Holine. I was the only one on the mic. And I don't know who the second was. I think it was Albertson. Albertson? Okay. All righty, Todd. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a private hangar uh, that's being purchased by uh, another uh, entity, and so we will have to terminate this lease, and uh, we will enter into a new lease with uh, with a new entity. So that's what this is. Do you have a backup? Someone that's waiting to enter a lease? Yes. Okay. We've already we've already passed that. Yeah, we've already approved the Lake Erie Tech lease. Oh, okay. This is Lake Erie Tech. The closing is occurring at the end of this. Well. It occurred, I suppose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we probably want to terminate this <laughs> this one before we <laughs> get going. Any questions, council, or comments? All right. I'll look for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. <laughs> Motion carries. Item number eleven is authorization for the airport to apply for an FAA grant AIP project number three dash forty six. Dash zero zero five eight dash zero three four dash two thousand nineteen for <laughs> the terminal apron reconstruction project authorization to accept grant and for the mayor to sign all necessary documents. Make a motion to approve. We have second. A motion by Manti and a second by Redemsky, I think. Mm -hmm. Todd. 
Sorry. Uh, so, I see uh, we got Michael here. <laughs> we have Mike Schmidt from Helms & Associates. Mm -hmm. Uh, he'll touch on this, uh, and then I can fill in afterwards. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, last Tuesday, we opened bids for your air carrier ramp reconstruction project. Uh, we received six bids, which was uh, pretty exceptional for for that project, and they came in about uh, $440,000 under my engineer's estimate, which is wow. in itself uh, an anomaly considering this year. I've, I know I've had conversations with Heath. Uh, the FAA across the board nationally has seen a lot of projects come in over budget, so it was a breath of fresh air to see uh, uh, that type of competition come in and uh, uh, get those kind of numbers for your, for your ramp reconstruction. TNR contracting was a low bidder. Um, the first item here, both of these uh, items, number 11 and 12, kind of tie together. Um, the FAA does not issue grants based on estimates, so they want hard bid numbers. So we cannot send a grant application in until we bid the project, have all the numbers um, hardlined so they know that they can program it in. Uh, they're still working through their discretionary programs. There's a lot of carryover that hasn't come in yet. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of projects nationally that kind of came in over budget, so they're, the FA in itself nationally is scrambling to see what they can do for funding. Um, apron projects are generally a little lower priority, so what we've been told is it might be a little while before we hear on the grant for Watertown. Um, they have to have it out, obviously, before the end of September, before the end of their fiscal year, but uh, I would anticipate sometime, sometime between mid-August to the end of September we'll, we'll hear on a grant. So uh, if you look in there, the total grant uh, application amount is $2.86 million. That encompasses all of the, the uh, construction and construction engineering. The city's share on that portion would be $143,000. It's the same 5%. And we did have this budgeted. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Thank you. Airport board reviewed it. Uh, yes. And so when we get the grant offer, uh, we'll actually bring that back through as a hard copy. Uh, for something for them to look at tangible. Okay. And then uh, we'll bring it back to council for you. Excellent. Questions, council? Comments? Councilman Vilhar? I guess I'm a little bit, conf bit confused. I mean, we're, we're approving the grant application, and the next item is the, the, the bid for the project itself. Yes. So assuming we, have, we, has, we approve the bid, but what happens if the grant is rejected? It's on contingency. Yeah, so it's, it's, on a contingency. It's, it's a tentative Absolutely. award pending receipt of an FAA grant offer. Okay, okay. If we don't get the grant offer, we don't do the project, and okay. everything goes away. And, and then not being that familiar with the, uh, the layout of the airport out there, how does this project tie into or relate to the new terminal project, which is hopefully coming <coughs> in the near future? What this project does is, is your existing ramp right now, you, you've got three major concerns. You, the, the pavement distresses, the drainage. Uh, I think you guys have all been aware of the, you know how that uh, ramp about 50 feet out drains back towards the terminal building, and then containment for de-icing. Um, obviously, the terminal buildings, it's going to be a few years before, even on a fast track, before that's constructed and operational. So with the design of this is... It's going to be operational for air carrier service, but then we're, you know we're alleviating all those drainage issues. We're putting in some containment for de-icing, obviously repairing the pavement distresses by reconstructing the apron. But once the terminal moves and your new terminal is operational, this is becomes a, a pretty prime real estate for general aviation. So expansion of your FBOs, possibly Lake Area Tech if they wanted to expand over there. So it makes it very marketable for future general aviation use. Helicopter operations. What, what, what Will the is the FAA or DO2 whoever acts on this? Will they see it the same way? I mean, yes, uh, we sent them two different plan drawings showing them commercial use, and then we showed them after the terminals built uh, the general okay. aviation use with okay. the marked up drawings and all that. Okay, yep. okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Then I will look for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item 12 is award of bid for AIP project number 3-46-0058-3034-2019 air carrier ramp reconstruction to TNR Contracting Inc. Sioux Falls, South Dakota in the amount of $2,391,619.50 contingent upon receipt and approval of a good faith DBE effort, that's 
um, and receipt of FAA grant offer. I've got the contingency in there. A motion. Motion. <laughs> a motion by Manti and a second by Albertson. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so we did receive six bids. Uh, TNR Contracting out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota was the low bidder. Um, so bids range from two million three hundred ninety-one thousand all the way up to three million two hundred sixty thousand. So there was a fair fair spread there, but uh, I was very uh, happy to see six bidders come to the table that morning. Uh, we've seen a lot of projects where we're only getting one or two bidders. Um, we've been in the past when 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 things have. Uh, as I talked earlier, you know, the, it's a hurry up and wait, and you go out and bid, and people are full, and you don't get any bids. So to see six on this type of project was, was awesome to see. Um, just to touch on the, uh, the contingencies, obviously, depending on if we get an FAA grant offer for the project. The, also, the other one is TNR Contracting did not meet their disadvantaged business enterprise uh, goal, so they have to provide us with their thorough documentation of all of their contacts with DBE firms and, and responses they received. So there's a chance they would fail at that? There's a chance, yes. And um, then we'll go to the second? Yes. We'll have so to bring it back? I, TNR Contracting does so much work with the South Dakota Department of Transportation. I, I've never had an issue with the previous projects with right. them getting the, the they, required documentation. They've been documentation. through this before. They Absolutely. Know, they know what kind of documentation they absolutely. Have to provide to show they made the effort. Yes, absolutely. Right. Okay. Questions? Councilman Y? Uh, Todd, I can see this on my screen here, but I'll just ask you the question. Were there any Watertown contractors that bid this project? Yes. There were. <clears throat> yes, there was. Maybe I can't. Maybe I'm looking at something wrong then, or the, a different one. I don't see it on here. Dunnick bid it as a prime. So Dun Dunnick Inc. Their their home office is technically Prinsburg, Minnesota, but they're located here in town. Oh. Yep. Yep. Other questions? All right. We'll look for action. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. I think that was my last item. I just I want to give you so. one little update. Uh, congratulations. We hit almost 1,600 employments in July. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. <Wow. laughs> it keeps growing. Uh, I want to thank the community, thank the, thank the city of Watertown for, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, it's just going to keep growing. So uh, that was our record month ever. 600 <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Councilman. Todd, Robbie? where does that put us uh, for the year? And what are your, are your predictions for hitting the magic number? Let's keep using the airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we stay on track, as I see it uh, coming forward, you know, looking that month and a half to two months out uh, really doesn't give me a, uh, a sense of hope. But seeing the numbers uh, coming forward in that month time frame or, or closer, uh, they really, really pick up. So I'm just guessing that people are taking uh, their sweet time booking tickets uh, right at the last, that, like I said, that month time frame. Because if we look past that, uh, it's like just uh, with ADI, it was the same way. Uh, it was that month or in where people were starting to really book tickets. So if we stay on track uh, as we are right now, uh, we'll hit 10,000 easy. Uh, where are we right now? I'd have to go back and look because I'd have January numbers in there as well from, from ADI that I have to throw in. So I can get back to you on that. Thanks. All right. Item number 13 is approval of insurance policies and authorization for payment of premiums for general liability, auto liability, and physical damage, law enforcement liability, buildings and contents, equipment property damage, and equipment breakdown, boiler and machinery coverage. And also want to include an authorization for the finance officer to issue a special check in the amount of $398,411.10. Have a motion by Y? Second. Second by Rodemski. And um, I will let Kristen... Tell us about this. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
This is our standard renewal for our insurance. I usually come to you about this time every year. Um, not too much of a change. I guess um, it is a 15% increase, and it looks a little high. But after looking into it, um, I would say between our large claim we had, and then we did add, um, we actually had six large pieces of equipment um, between a fire truck, a couple of garbage uh, trucks, and then um, utilities had one too. And then we also did add um, the zoo building onto that, and then we had some large improvements at wastewater. So taking into account all of that, I, I don't see that it really stands out necessarily. Um, this has went also, the utilities portion has been approved by their, their board as well. I shouldn't say board, but their department as well. So both of us are in agreement with everything that's before you, so I just need approval to pay and renew the insurance. All right. Any questions, Councilman Albertson? Kristen, just a question about, do you put this out for bids, or this is just, you assume this is the best one we can get, or? Yep, no, I have not went out for bids. Um, we just kind of renew each year. Um, since I've been the finance officer, I guess we haven't. I actually don't know the last time we went out for uh, RFP on this. Um, I guess I've been happy with them, and I just kind of continue on. If that's something that the council would want, I guess I could look into that next year if that's the direction. Councilman Rob or Bill Hauer. Kristen, <clears throat> Kristen, you said um, premium about 15% more. Uh, you went through some building uh, additions or some equipment building additions. Um, also, we, as I recall, from that cl big claim two years ago, did, did the rates, I guess my question is, did the rates actually go up or did, it, did the premium go up because we lost that, because we lost a good size credit that we used up by, by getting that big claim from a couple years ago? Our loss ratio credit did go away. That should stay away for about three years. This isn't actually the first year that we lost it. We lost that last year okay. as well. So we're kind of in year two of that. Um, I think between our standard increase of property valuations, we usually increase those about 3% um, each year. So again, that kind of okay. ups the premium. And then the fact that we did add a couple, like the zoo okay. building and then some other new equipment. Okay. So Thank you. Councilman Bueller. Just, just for clarification, I think in South Dakota, don't most communities of our size use them? Yes. I mean, this is, it's this very common to use the uh, Assurance Alliance. That this use. is this is pretty standard for governments to use um, South Dakota Public Assurance Alliance. So um, I feel confident this is kind of what they specialize in. And um, like I said, we've always had pretty good luck when we do have claims or we have questions. They're always able to answer them right away. So. Just an additional comment, I think it's worth remembering that we got over $2, $2 million in claims from them from a couple of years ago, so I think we need to keep that in our back of our mind, too. Yep. <laughs> right. Other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Item number 14 is ratification of the mayor's signature on the second amendment to grant agreement between South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources and the city of Watertown. Can make a motion to approve? Yeah. A motion by Manti and a second by Roby. And Roger Foote, our Upper Big Sioux River <coughs> Watershed Project director is here and to explain this. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is our, our main grant, operational grant agreement with the state of South Dakota, who in turn funnels money from the EPA to us through that. Um, some changes from the original application, well, we went through some funding issues with the, uh, the DNR and recommendations on their part. Um, however, everything on our end appears to be in order. This will set the project up for another three years of operation uh, that's kind of the cycle we have been going through. I would like to add that I signed it after, b before getting your authorization, after talking with the city attorney about the risk of my signing this application without your authorization in case you would not authorize me to sign it. Um, then if, if you don't authorize 
this, then we won't get the grant. And we'll just have to spend all of our own money. So that risk is pretty low. So I went for it. So I apologize. Try not to do that in the future. But That's mostly my fault. When the original grant application came through in September of last year, I didn't word things quite right, and things got confusing. And then the current Secretary of DNR is retiring or had re we had two days to get him to sign it before he retired, so that was the, the big push. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions, Councilman Vilhauer? I guess I'm a little bit confused, Roger. Does this, so this puts us back on track then? I mean, because I thought we lost a good chunk of our funding we uh, did. a year ago. They only authorized, instead of the $420,000 that I asked for, they authorized $50,000. Okay. This is the agreement from those discussions. For okay. The 50. Okay, so so where to, when you say I'm not sure exactly what your words were, but if we're back on track for the next three years, uh, we either had to cut back on what we're doing or come up with revenues from someplace else. Um, yes and no. Uh, the funds they have allowed us to maintain the funds that we had in the previous grant cycle. This is an extension. Instead of taking all the money away and just giving us the fifty thousand, they let us keep the the three hundred thousand that we have on the books currently. Add 50000 okay. to that, and we'll use that for operations. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry for projects. Mm -hmm. Councilman Alverson? So, Roger, next year then we'll be in trouble, do you think, or? Only if the water doesn't go down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this, this is for three years, and so the next grant cycle, 1920, this will take us to 2022, I believe. Um, the funding is set for this time period. Anything else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying nay. <laughs> Motion carries. Mayor. Yes. Well, we have Roger here. May I, can I just sure. ask him a question that was outside of that? Uh, the lake has uh, risen, Lake Compesca has risen significantly. Uh, some algae bloom out there going on. Can you kind of maybe update the public on that since we have you here? Is that, yes. would that be okay? Please go ahead. Um, Every time I go on vacation, it rains or something. Um, from my last water level check was on Thursday, and between Thursday and this morning, the lake had ridden, risen 13 inches. That's an incredible amount of water in that short of a period of time. Um, it appears as if the, the USGS uh, water quality or water quantity graphs, it appears that the lake is going to turn within the next day or two and start to recede again, unless it rains. The, it appears the, the aquifer material, the underlying soil is saturated, everything is full. What would usually dissipate quickly is running off on the surface quickly now. Um, I wish I had a crystal ball. I've been fielding lots of questions on when's the water going to go down. Should I lift my dock? Should I you know, lower this or raise that? Mother Nature is not playing nice this year. I, In my experience, I have not seen water this high this late into the season before. So it has probably happened, but I have not seen it. And as far as the algae blooms, yes, we are experiencing an algae bloom. Um, the reports I got yesterday from were from North Lake and now today on South Lake, but then I've heard that it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, the things for the public to be aware of is that if it's a nasty pea soup, thick green or blue-green in color, just stay out of it. Um, I've just had discussions with DNR today. They are doing toxin testing tonight. Uh, we will be doing additional species identifications tomorrow morning. Um, common sense, if it looks gross, stay out of it. It should dissipate within a few days. Of course, when that happens, those nutrients get recycled, and the next series of warm, sunny days with calm water may cause the same thing to happen again. This is driven from the nutrients that were brought into the lake with the flooding event earlier this spring. And what else can I say? It's, it's please bear with us. It's, there's nothing we can physically do about it right now to remove it. I know it's a stinky, nasty mess right now, but it should go away. The first time I saw blue-green algae, I was a kid, and I could swear someone poured paint into the water. And, and I'm hearing that from people. Someone poured paint. It's not paint. It's, it's algae, and blue-green algae actually smells 
terrible to humans. Not necessarily to dogs, though. So you you need to watch your dogs. Yes. Don't let them. Go you know down how your dog likes to roll in certain things in the lawn. <laughs> it's the same yeah. instinct there. They may die it, them right. This is true. And and pelican uh, that hasn't moved up as as rapidly. Strangely as enough, that has been steady over the weekend. Now with the river flowing fairly fairly hard. You'll notice that the parks are, are flooded again. Uh, Pelican will more than likely raise a little bit, but as to what extent, I, I couldn't tell you right now. All right, Councilman Rademski. I was actually on the lake yesterday in that pea soup. We'd see jet skis go by, and it was just a green spew. Uh, also, I was wondering, is uh, there a current wake rule on the lake right now? The uh, No the, wake rule? The no wake rule has to be declared by the governor. Um, we have not requested that through the Game Fish and Parks yet. We've been trying to reach out to the public through public service announcements, our Facebook, Twitter, the usual social media routes for people to be concerned or to be considerate of the shorelines to stay away when the water is this high. I like to think that we're getting through, but maybe we need to hit that again tomorrow. I would, because there's a lot of erosion going on there. We drove around and we saw it's it's not a good situation. Right, and I mean, people should just be considerate and don't wait for the governor to tell them not to make a wake. Just don't make a wake. Uh, it looks like the river has crested from this event and is starting to recede, so um, that's not to say that it won't rain again tomorrow and come back up. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Item number 15 is authorization for the mayor to sign an agreement for truancy officer services at the Watertown School District for the 2019-2020 school year. We've got a motion by Vilhauer. Second. And a second by Radomski. And um, I see Officer Toomey is in the audience. You want to come up and tell us what you do here? Sure. Thanks, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is just our standard agreement for our patrol officers to act as the truancy officer uh, with the school. So if uh, we see Johnny is not in school and then walking down the street, that gives us the authority to pick him up and return him back to school. <laughs> Same thing we do every year at this time, right? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right. Um, I look for action. Did I get a motion? Yes. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Sorry about that, Michael. Item number 16 is old business. Do we have any old business? Yeah. Councilman Vilhar? Uh, Heath or maybe somebody, where are we at with the 21st Street uh, bike trail out there? What's, are we still waiting on the FAA on that, or where are we at? Uh, short answer, yes. Um, I know Todd's been in communications uh, a few weeks back, and we were still awaiting a final response from them. I, I do have that on my list to follow up with Todd and with Helms. Helms has been helping with that plat. Uh, really, it's their approval of that plat so that uh, that pathway can be located up closer to that fence uh, by the widening of that right-of-way through there. So is it a safe assumption that it probably won't get, get rebuilt this summer anymore? Well... I'm always hopeful, so <laughs> I'm saying there's still a chance. Uh, it's probably not a high chance, but there is still a chance. It's only August. <laughs> Other old business? Councilman Roby? Uh, can you give me an update on Cherry Creek Drive, please? Absolutely. Councilman Roby. If you weren't going to ask for it, I would have gave it to you anyway. <laughs> no, we did. Uh, we met with... Uh, the consultant for the developer to the north, we met with them last week, Austin Engineering, and uh, th this is kind of turning into an opportunistic uh, um, kind of a series of events here that, that's transpired. Um, one of the main things I want to do yet and still have not been able to get 100% confirmation from the Corps of Engineers on the do's and don'ts or the cans and can'ts of, of that uh, designated wetland area through there. So we want to be careful, again, like I mentioned at the last meeting, on what we perform for an improvement to that drainage way to not uh, necessarily commit the city to have to mitigate wetlands and go incur that cost. However, um, the developer of the north has uh, bid out their project, including their regrading. And through the design of their grading, 
uh, in talking with Austin Engineering. It is likely that uh, some of this material and, and the need for the extents of their grading would tie right directly into our channel improvements. And so that, that discussion pursued down a path, which I haven't got confirmation from yet, from the developer themselves. But that discussion that we had was the potential for them to perform this regrading with their project, uh, which would help alleviate us from having to go through uh, that process. One of the key details we have yet to button up on that development are the off-site grading agreement and the snow storage agreements. So what staff was contemplating, and we still have to run this through Matt, is when we draft those agreements, there is a potential that we could incorporate their regrading of this channel into that agreement. And the use of that material, the use and the privileges for that off-site grading to accommodate their development may all come out in a wash and benefit everybody. Um, so that's kind of, in, in a nutshell, where we're at and where the discussions have led. Uh, but like I said, I do still need to follow up with the Corps of Engineers on uh, what, what I want to do with that component with the core is just make sure that we're doing the most we can without getting into, uh, no pun intended, but treading the waters into mitigation land and uh, try to avoid that to the best extent that we can. Other old business? Councilman Albertson. What can you tell the community about the ice arena? That's a continued ask that I get. I get asked that all the time, too. Yeah, and so I, I just think maybe if you would update us, right. update the community. I, I did ask the mall for um, their very best offer to us, and um, they gave me an offer, and the council is actively considering it. I put it that way, and we'll be making a decision shortly on how to move forward. No decision yet. So, any other old business? See none. Any new business? Councilman Rudemski? I actually have a couple of items here. <clears throat> um, one was the uh, consideration of a four way stop at 2nd Street Northwest and 14th Avenue Northwest. Due to the uh, new development in those areas, uh, the traffic congestion during the lunch hour, uh, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning and 5 to 6 o'clock in the evening is quite congested. It's quite a challenge to pull on to 14th Avenue there when you're coming off of 2nd Street there. So I was wondering if we could take a look at that. You can take a look at that. You okay. I also had another individual contact me that lives below St. Anne's Hill where that rail line runs behind their house. There is four culverts there. Three of the culverts drain in between the houses. This individual happens to live with the culvert that drains right in the middle of their backyard. And whenever it rains heavily or the snow melts in the spring, it potentially she's got a video of it running right through her garage. Mm -hmm. And I guess the engineers were out there about five years ago, came and took a look at it, and nothing's been done with it. They didn't offer any solution or anything else. So if we could revisit that. I can explain. Um, the culverts were there before the rail line was constructed. Uh, obviously, we didn't build the culverts after the railroad went in. There were existing drainage courses that were flowing down the hill and when they put the berm in for the railroad, they put culverts at those locations. Later, people built downstream of those culverts and I understand this is generally not a problem right now this time of year. The water flows just like it normally would. Uh, snow removal though around the structures that were built and around the trees that were planted in the path uh, have made the water flow especially bad in the winter when um, we have snow getting in the way. And so it's, it's more of a management of the private property, which the state law doesn't say that uh, much about drainage management other than you can't block the natural flow of water um, in an, a drainage. So... The water comes off of St. Anne's Hill and it goes to the river and they are in between the path. So it's it's been a private property issue and it's uh, being that it's 
a problem only during the winter time when there's snow or when the snow is melting. That's um, probably not a problem that can be solved with grading because uh, water doesn't have a problem right now to get from the hill to the river in this time of year when there's no snow in the way. We can't do anything with the grading that will change that. That it's it's going to be a snow removal problem unless we would put it in pipes or whatever, and that's um, probably not a cost-effective solution. So yes, this has been looked at several times, and it's been felt that it's a nuisance to people who built in the path of the water, and it, it probably isn't an appropriate way to spend taxpayer dollars to correct a problem that someone created building in the path of the water. So. He probably doesn't know anything about that, so otherwise I would have deferred to him. <laughs> anything else? Councilwoman Manti. Yeah. Um. This isn't new business to my fellow council people or staff. Uh, what I wanted to do, um, because right now it's happening tremendously in my ward, detours off of Highway 212 are coming through residential districts. Um, and so I wanted to remind people first that that's a 25 mile an hour through that entire detour. The police department has done a terrific job of making their presence known, of slowing down the traffic, uh, being there with radar, and so using their sign that says how fast you're going, and it has made an impact. And it seems like it cycles, but my point really is is that this detouring is going to go on for quite a while now and it may not just be the fourth avenue detour but there may be others and most all of them are going to go through residential districts so i think people really need to be aware of the fact that that speed limit is 25 miles an hour there's a lot of kids along all broadway and fourth right now and we're going to have school starting pretty soon so i really think we need to put that out there. So that's my public service announcement for tonight. Thank you, Councilwoman. <laughs> Is there any other new business? Any liaison reports? Mayor. Councilwoman Bill Howard. Oh, sorry. Who said oh. That? Uh, just an update. The, the utilities, uh, the, the summer study on the uh, territorial uh, dispute between the uh, uh, REAs and the city-owned uh, utilities. Summer study started about a week and a half ago. A few of us, uh, Mayor was out there, myself, uh, Adam Kars and Steve Lehner from the Utilities Department uh, attended that hearing. Uh, the first, this is the first one. Uh, Steve and the Mayor testified on our behalf out there. Uh, this is a uh, one of probably four, I think, they were guesstimating as far as how many different sessions they would have before they render any kind of decision. and whether or not it'll come back to the legislature next session, who knows, but anyway, that summer study has begun and uh, uh, fighting the fight for, for Watertown. Thank you. Councilman Bueller? Uh, just uh, just something that we may want to consider moving forward. Uh, this, this is a discussion from our Park and Rec Board meeting last week, um, and it, it sort of started with a constituent of mine, um, but I know that we we're looking at plans. We're trying to be proactive as far as this emerald ash borer thing goes, just, and that's mainly I think I want to think our focus is on taking down trees and prioritizing those that are diseased. But I, I just wonder: are we focusing enough on replant? Are we are we doing? Should we be doing more? Should we be more proactive on planting trees right now? you know, that are going to have to replace those. So that's something I think we need to consider. I did bring that up at the par Park and Rec Board meeting, and so I, I think there will be additional discussions in that regard. Thank you. I think that's a really excellent point to make and something we should look into seriously. I was riding my bike through City Park um, just the other day and just loving the uh, tree canopy. It's so beautiful, and knowing most of those trees are ash and they'll probably be gone and it's trying to picture what that park's going to look like yeah we should start as soon as possible and make sure that the park board is recommending in their budget request adequate funds for planting trees i think he made a great comment too he said the best time to plant a tree is 20 years yes. ago yes. and the second best time is today right mm -hmm. so. yes i agree thank you very much for that other liaison reports? 
Councilman Holine. Mayor, this wouldn't be a liaison appoint, uh, report, but I do want to piggyback on taking out the ash trees is a great idea. Better to do it now before the, I mean, for private citizens, better to just start looking at it now before the price goes up because everywhere where it's hit, the price has skyrocketed right. once it's actually hit. But as for the city concerns, uh, I just got done with the Master Gardener class. I'll probably fail the test, but I talked with Professor John Ball, the tree guy of South Dakota, and he was adamant in any city who does replant, go with diversity. Yes, yes. Uh, very big deal. Uh, even up where I live by Lincoln Elementary School, they're beautiful for about a week with all the cherry trees, but all those trees are experiencing cherry rot right now, and they might be facing a situation years down the line as well. So diversity is a great idea. Right, and I, I know the park department's going to be cashing in on all those master gardeners to help us do our ash inventory <laughs> that they're working on. So other reports? Councilman Albertson. Uh, just a kind of a good thing. I think we just had a golf tournament at Cattail Crossings, the women's, South Dakota women's, uh, and I talked to several of them as they were finishing up. I was over watching to see who was winning and how the Watertown people were doing, but many, many comments on what a nice golf course we have with that 27 and what good shape that it was for this. I mean, they just said it was just great, and so I think that's a good thing. I haven't seen Todd, and I did see Levi and tell him that several comments were how well run it was and what good shape the course is in. Yes, thank you for that. We do have a beautiful 27-hole golf course in this town, and that's quite unusual for a town our size, so very nice. Thank you. Anything else? We do have a need to go into executive session pursuant to SDCL 1-25-2 in order to consult with legal counsel on contractual matters, and we do not expect to take any action when we come out. That I need, we have a motion by Albertson, second. a second by Y. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Motion carries. Oh, scouts, thanks for coming. Hope you um, all earned your badge. Good job.